if you could place the FICB project uh, in uh, you know perspective here right now, what is it? Why do we need it? Right. You know, the fighting arms of the army, one is the infantry, which fights on its feet, and then there is mechanized infantry, which fights using infantry combat vehicles, earlier called armored personnel carriers. Now, the role of the mechanized infantry is to fight along with the armor, that is the tanks, supporting each other, also capture objectives and hold them for some time till they are relieved. And for these, they have what is called the infantry combat vehicles. Now, these infantry combat vehicles should be able to operate over land, be transportable by air, and very importantly, be able to participate in amphibious operations. The current ICV with the mechanized infantry is the BMP-2, as you pointed out. This is now quite old. It is becoming obsolescent. And the army is looking for a new infantry combat vehicle, fancily called Future Infantry Combat Vehicle, or FICV. All mm -hmm. over the world, it's called FICV now. And remember, alongside, it is also looking for a future tank, which they are calling it FRC. Future Ready Combat Vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's important because it both require lots of money. And that's where some problem is coming in. Now, uh, the BMP-2 at present... Uh, until such time we get the FICV is undergoing upgrades. This mm -hmm. is a stopgap measure. Because now we have T-72 and T-90 tanks, which are very advanced tanks. We have the Arjun also. And this BMP, which is now 35 years old, it started with BMP-1, now it's BMP-2. But still, the basic technology and the basic frame is of old design. Mm -hmm. It requires upgradation. So the government started looking for it. As you said, 10 years have passed. First, in 2010, they issued a letter of expression of interest to some select companies. They responded in 2012. For some reasons, it was cancelled. 2015, again, they issued letters for expression of interest to a larger number of select companies. This project is to be made in India. That... Uh, EOI response is now on hold. Mm -hmm. There are some differences which they are trying to resolve. So this is where we are at present. What is the user's requirement? Yep. What is the user looking for? From the end user's perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. Very rightly, this time, the Ministry of Defense and the Army identified and laid down in great detail what is the requirement. The first thing was mobility. You know, the present BMP is not so fast to keep up with new generation tanks. They want it faster. They have laid down and asked questions in the EOI offer as to what will be the speed on road, off road, in water, uh, whether it is transportable by IL-76 and other strategic transport aircraft that we have got. Mm -hmm. On firepower, the present limitations are that the cannon has to be manually loaded. It takes a lot of time. It should be an auto-load cannon. It should have two ATGM launchers, simultaneously two missiles on the ready for firing mm -hmm. with a range of 4,000 meters or so. Uh, it should have digital um, fire control system, gun control system. That's on the turret is very important for the FICV. There are lots of advanced systems on the turret and it requires cutting-edge technologies for designing and developing the turret. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, then it requires uh, surveillance and uh, vision devices, night vision of the third generation. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we, in the army, we are generally using second generation. So these will be thermal imagers of third generation. And even the uh, uh, anti-tank rocket, uh, anti-tank guided missiles will be of fire and forget uh, third generation and not the older generation which we are. So... And then, all of this has been laid down, must not exceed, I think, 28 kilo, uh, uh, tons or so. Mm -hmm. It's a very tall order. In India, no company has made an ICV earlier. Only the Ordnance Factory Board has made the Arjun tank and under license the T-72 and the T-90. Mm -hmm. Even Vijayant tank, which is no longer in production, was designed by a team which consisted of people from England. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, of course, made in India. Ordnance Factory Board has the uh, know-how to make under license, but again, to develop a new infantry combat vehicle, it's questionable. Okay. Private companies, 
under the procedure that has been adopted, the make procedure in which the government is going to fund 80% of the cost of the prototype and 20% will be met by the private companies. Uh, these private companies will make a consortium, seek help from outside, but it will be an Indian project. It will be. So an hopefully an Indian company under this make in India thing will be able to come up with this kind of requirement. If you look at one uh, issue which was raised by Dinakar uh, mm -hmm. earlier, about the neighborhood, you know, the reason why we have to go ahead and uh, reinvent uh, ourselves or rather, you know, uh, make that improvement in our equipment. Uh, so how do you see uh, the scenario in our neighborhood, uh, both Pakistan and China, the immediate neighbors uh, whom we look at when we uh, try and, you know, uh, reformulate our strategies or uh, go ahead and modernize our weapon systems? If you look at the top 20 fighting vehicles of the world, only Arjun figures in that list of top 20, top 20. There are four Chinese tanks or fighting vehicles which uh, appear in that list. There are six Russian, Ukrainian, Czechoslovak, American. But this one Arjun tank also, we are having you know differences of opinion whether it uh, meets the requirement or not and whether mm -hmm. Mark II will meet the requirement or not. But there is, you know, there is lack of... Uh, a, military industrial base in India because of which we are not able to make an ICV or a tank in India and depend on foreign countries. Most of our tanks and the ICV, we have used one, we have used one only, that is the mm -hmm. BMP. Uh, before that, we use some wheeled uh, armored personal carriers mm -hmm. are from Russia or USSR. And so we are forced to adopt or modify our doctrines and our tactics to suit these. You can play around with changing some of the systems and equipment in these uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. But basically, these are made for their own way of fighting, not okay. the Indian way of fighting. Okay. So we need a domestic fighting vehicle. We need a domestic tank. The amount of money involved is so much. Uh, the expertise available is not enough. So we have to find via media. And for that, Last year in January 2000, that is 2018, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Defense approved what is called the Make 2 procedure, mm -hmm. under which, you know, industry had been complaining, look, we can make so many things, you don't even ask us. So they have said, okay, industry can suggest what you can make. A collegiate will examine, they will approve the project, it will be put up on the Defense Ministry website, uh, an expression of interest offer will be issued. As many companies as want can respond to it and not limited number. Mm -hmm. Once the responses come in, the RFP will be issued. And again, whoever wants to respond to the RFP can okay. do it. And then there are some assurances. So, so that's, that's, assurances that's a make to orders. project. There are assurances of 50% of the time uh -huh. will be taken to consider everything. I mean, it will be kind of faster than the make procedure. And projects less than 3 crores will be only for MSMEs. Okay. This company which has offered to make FICV under Make 2 procedure has created uh, a dilemma. So this dilemma, I believe, was about to be sorted out. Let's okay. see what comes. What is T90 MS uh, when we talk about an uh, improved version of T90 and what's the uh, you know significance here with respect to the Indian Armed Forces? Right. So, to get everybody on the same plane, uh, you know, tanks have this characteristic of firepower, mobility and shock action. And they form part of the uh, armored formations, which are the vital part of strike formations. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a necessary component for land warfare because at such speed they go into enemy territory and destroy the enemy armor which normally for, forms part of the enemy's strategic reserves. The armored formations are also the one which are used to exploit success that we may be gaining in the enemy territory mm -hmm. or wherever we find some difficulties because the enemy is opposing us. The armor formations, they change the outcome of battle. Okay. So now what we have in terms of tanks, our uh, main battle tanks are the T-72s, the T-90s and the Arjun Mark I. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Overall, we have about more than 4,000 and 4,500 if you count what is in the pipeline. T-72s, as the number denotes, they came in the late 70s. Now they are uh, about 45 years old. Similarly, T-90s are also about 25 years plus old. So there is always an effort to keep improving, get newer ones or produce newer ones. Uh, with better features because the enemy is also improving their arsenal and anti-tank weapons are also improving in the world today. Okay. So what happened is that the T-72s will be replaced by what is called the future main battle tank or the army prefers to call it uh, FRCV, future ready combat vehicle and the T-90s, uh, we acquired them in four batches. This is the fourth batch which has been approved. Mm -hmm. One of the batches was for 1000 tanks to be licensed manufactured in India by the heavy vehicles factory which is an ordnance factory in Tamil Nadu. And they started by delivering 50 tanks a year and slightly improved it but they have been going slow for many reasons. Okay. And we have a shortfall. We now want more tanks for six to eight regiments to be equipped with it. So, there was a need to go in for more T-90s okay. and now when the time came to acquire more, we found that the Russians have unveiled the T-90MS, uh, which was unveiled in 2011, mm -hmm. which has got many new features which we can discuss okay. and hence uh, we have landed up with this approval of the Defense Acquisition Council for 464 tanks. In terms of the tanks which Indian Army have. If you compare it with what our adversaries have or what other powers in the region have, so how do you look at the overall picture? Because as General Chakraborty pointed out, tanks are the mainstay of the battle. Luckily, we are very well off, especially when it comes to firepower or any of these tanks. You know, even when we had the T-55, we upgunned it from a 100 millimeter to 105 millimeter. We had a world-class gun. Mm -hmm. So, we said, let's not continue with an inferior gun. We have a gun, let's upgrade it. And we did that. We have been doing it with other tanks as well. Uh, in in uh, gun technology, we are very well off. But let me put this again in perspective. Uh, with T-90, the new T-90s being brought up to T-90 MS standard, mm -hmm. We will have a tank which I place and many other people place it as sixth best in the world. Okay. The first one everybody considers is the Abrams M1A2 American tank. The second one uh, is the, I would say, the German Leopard 2. And then we have the Challenger 2 of UK. We have Leclerc of France. Uh, and then comes at f number five comes the T-90 MS. Mm -hmm. The Israeli Markawa Mark IV comes next. Even the uh, the the Russian uh, Armata, which uh, Chakravarti mentioned, mm -hmm. is slightly placed above T-90. Uh, but the Russians are also finding it difficult to finance the production of the Armata. Okay. And then the uh, uh, South Korean uh, Black Thunder. And then comes the Chinese 99, which Chakravarti was mentioning. And then you have a Ukraine Oplot Which Pakistan M. has, the 99. Uh, uh, not, yet, Al not yet. Not yet. Al-Khali is, is a version. That is a T-84. Okay, Al-Khali is a version of T-84. Yes. Uh, no, Al-Khali is a different, a different version, version of the T-90 with Chinese made. Chinese made. Okay. The T-90 Chinese in, inferior to the Russian T-90. Okay. And that's what it is based on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now you talked about the firepower. Let me start with any tank. Uh, why T-90 MS standard has come about? Okay. You take any tank, you take from the front. Uh, the hull has to be uh, good enough with uh, reactive armor because the anti-tank missiles are getting better and better with the tandem warhead. Mm -hmm. So, everything that you develop is getting, you know, a counter to it. Okay. So, you have to ward off any kind of anti-tank missile and so the spaced armor, Kanchan armor, Cobham armor, uh, ERA, explosive, reactive armor, all these are coming into place. Okay. Then you have, you see the driver comes next, the gunner, driver, commander, they must have a good view, thermal imager sites, 
panoramic view, mm -hmm. all these are coming in. And these are the features I'm talking about, third generation tanks, which okay. are coming into the T90MS. Mm -hmm. You have the turret which revolves around. Earlier the man had to come out to fire his machine gun. Now it is an unmanned turret. Remotely controlled weapon system from inside. Okay. The machine gun fires from inside. The anti-tank missiles are fired from inside. You don't have to expose yourself. You are not unprotected. Then comes electronic measures. You have measures to warn you through uh, laser and through electronic means mm -hmm. that something is being fired at you, you can take countermeasures. So these are the all aspects as far as firepower and yes. protection is concerned. Firepower has changed very little. Okay. The power packs has changed very little. Most of them run on 1200 horsepower okay. uh, engines. Speeds may vary between 55 to 70 kilometers per hour. Okay. The ranges may vary from 500 to 700 kilometers. Mm -hmm. But these electronic and uh, protection measures, survivability measures, uh, more reliability measures are coming into the newer tanks. Okay. That's what has prompted to go in for third generation uh, better equipped tanks. And what exactly is a wheeled armored platform and why are we, you know, uh, giving that much focus or uh, importance to this kind of platform right now? Very briefly, let me touch upon how it all started. Ever since the advent of the motor car, uh, one gentleman by the name of Sims uh, used a quadricycle, a four-wheeled um, kind of automobile with a Maxim gun, no armor at all, no protection, uh, as a weapon of war. And that very soon led to an armored protection around a car using a cannon. But thereafter, there was no stopping and it led to, by the time World War II came, we were using scout cars and we were using armored cars uh, for escorts, for protection, for closing in with the enemy. And then, in the era of mechanized warfare, mm -hmm. when more developments took place, all this inspired to develop the infantry combat vehicle or the armored personnel carrier where these would operate along with mechanized columns, that is tanks, uh, to keep up with them, to convey the infantry safely up to the objective, where they would dismount, the tanks would support or overrun the enemy, and the infantry which dismounted would go and engage the enemy and capture the ground. So since then, uh, these APCs, whether they were tracked or wheeled, uh, both were used. Today, among the ton, top 10 APCs of the world, they are all wheeled, mm -hmm. not tracked. Uh, although there are tracked APCs, we are ourselves using a tracked infantry combat vehicle, the BMP-2 now. Now, this also, you know, uh, you can also think back about uh, irregular warriors like the IS, uh, ISIS uh, warriors who uh, use Toyota pickup trucks to mount anti-aircraft machine guns, to mount uh, um, uh, rocket launchers, to uh, all sorts of weapons, and they use them as escorts also. So, guns on wheels has been trending. Today, a time has come when the advantages and disadvantages of tracked vehicles, that is mainly tanks, vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis wheels, one is opposite to the other. The advantages of tanks are the disadvantages offered by wheels and the okay. advantages of wheels are the disadvantages. Now, let, let's look at it this way. Mm -hmm. Wheeled vehicles are half, wheeled armored platforms are almost half the weight of tanks. Tanks are going from 60 to 70 tons. Wheeled are from 15 to 30 to 35 tons. Mm -hmm. They are much faster. Tanks go at 60 to 70 kilometers on road. Uh, wheeled armored platform, they go at almost 100. Okay. The one you mentioned developed by Tata's and DRDO, the wheeled armored platform is a speed of 100 kilometers on road. In water, it is 10 kilometers per hour. Whereas tracked APCs, our BMP2 itself gives uh, about 7 kilometers per hour. So, but worldwide the trend is going towards having lighter tanks based on wheels. Because the nature of warfare, mm -hmm. the, the battlefield environment is such that 
contact and fighting is taking place in various domains on land sea air cyber space in outer space okay and these vehicles are required to have connectivity um, adaptability uh, fast mobility and one of the biggest advantages is mobility and speed which also uh, offers it survivability okay they may have less thickness of armor mm -hmm. but they are more survivable because they can scoot they can escape they can fire and they can you know disappear okay whereas on the other hand the tank is heavy it is got to carry a heavier armament more ammunition it has got lesser space it has got a bigger power pack because it requires more power it can go only up to a certain distance with the uh, uh, the amount of fuel it carries whereas uh, wheeled vehicles can go much further 1000 kilometers or so and yet not require repairs mm -hmm. a tank after 400 500 kilometers may require uh, logistic certain and support repairs and things like that how do we look at uh, the characteristics of this wheeled armored platform what does it pack and how useful is it for our forces uh, why has it been developed is the first thing mm -hmm. you know in the 1971 war we had btr 60 apc russian stuff or soviet stuff which we used in the battle of khulna and jasor these were amphibious uh, they helped us a lot and we also had later on the beat uh, the ot 40 uh, these were called scott apcs uh, these were also very good apcs they outlived their life some of them are lying in store sometimes they have been revived but it's not been very successful so they are obsolete but because they were so helpful during the war in bangladesh that we acquired the bmp1 uh, at that time and it became part of our mechanized warfare philosophy in 1984 we got the bmt2 now sometime in 2009 the army started of th uh, thinking about acquiring uh, these replacements for the bmp and the thought process at that time was and rfi was also issued for a wheeled apc and that's how drdo and in along with tatas and some other private players they developed the wheeled armored platform okay now remember we also had the brdm2 reconnaissance vehicle which was on wheels which came from russia in the year 84 85 i remember it was used extensively we raised some recce and support battalions which continue with that equipment now and it requires replacement or upgrade mm -hmm. so we've had very good experience with wheeled apcs and with wheeled reconnaissance vehicles and so the rfi was put out this was developed this is a very fine vehicle mm -hmm. the btr 60 and the scott were in the range of uh, 10 and a half to 14 and a half tons uh, one had a crew of uh, three another had a crew of two but they carried between nine to twelve passengers uh, very good speed almost very negligible preparation required for them to go amphibious okay this whap which has been developed now requires no preparation to go amphibious but this is 25 tons it has the same armament as our apc the bmp2 mm -hmm. it in fact the tatas had developed the chassis and the vehicle uh, and the turret was then put from the bmp2 but later on with the help from uh, lockheed general dynamics bae kongsberg mm -hmm. we had a new turret with a remote control station weapon station and with automatic cannon anti tank guided missile okay so with a with a remote control station you don't have to pop out of the apc mm -hmm. the commander or the driver or the nobody has to pop out it's all controlled from inside so the whap today is in the same class as the boxer or the piranha which are the latest apcs in the world in the western militaries okay now it remains to be seen whether the army goes for it or not 
The army has had a look at it. They have tried it out in the mountains. In fact, demonstrations or some things have been given to them. But the problem is right now the army is struggling with the projects for the FICV, the Future Infantry Combat Vehicle, and the FRCV, both of which require a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Between the two of them, 80,000 crore rupees are required. So, a wheeled uh, armored platform like this one definitely has its uses. It's it's a, it's a, it's an infantry carrying uh, combat vehicle. Okay. So it can be used in various uh, forms like motor carrier, NBC vehicle, reconnaissance vehicle, as a logistics vehicle for carrying cargo uh, in a battlefield environment where you require to keep up with the armored columns. Mm -hmm. So definitely there are uses. So it, has it has also been established that our industry has come of age, mm -hmm. that DRDO designed stuff can be made to international standards by a private industry. And that's, that's quite a significant aspect. Yes, definitely it's a significant aspect. Okay. And whatever latest technologies are available abroad, they can be assimilated and then we can develop them on our own. Okay. So I don't think this effort should go in waste. We must find uses for it and how we can induct them in the armed forces, even when there is a funds crunch.